Hi everybody here, Ghost Dog 688 here. Uh, I've been asked by both the community and the developers over at Iron Wolf Studios to do a little bit of information on the TRR and how best to use it. Uh, so I'm going to give my go of it and we'll see how things look. Uh, first of all, um, let's consider the problem. So one of the major issues with dropping depth charges is that they're dropped off the stern of the ship onto the submarine. Uh, when you're doing this, uh, there's a number of problems. First of all, we need to account for the sub's speed and direction, our speed and direction, and of course the fact that the depth charges do take some time to fall down to their target depth before they explode. The longer the depth, uh, the bigger the error. Uh, it's very hard, obviously, to estimate the sub's sp uh, position and, sp and speed without something like sonar, uh, and that's a great help. However, there is a massive problem. When you go uh, over the target, you lose contact with it. The TRR is the solution to this. What it will do is it will predict the course and speed of the target, and then you, as the user, can then use that information to successfully, hopefully, drop depth charges at the right location. This is, the, this is a screenshot of the TRR taken from uh, Eugene Lee Slover's uh, website. Uh, it's a fairly good representation of what we see inside Destroyer, and you can see it's a fairly big box, and it's basically an analog computer that does this for us. What it will do is it will solve the problem of when to drop the depth charges, and you do this by accounting for the destroyer's speed, the time taken for the depth charge to get to its target depth, and the target's predicted speed and position. Now, it cannot account for any changes in bearing, by the target uh, or by yourself and it is only as accurate as the input that you put in so as i say it's an analog computer it has a lot of limitations so once you know but once you know how to get around those limitations or how to correctly operate with those uh, limitations it becomes much more accurate than just guessing and throwing them off the side of the ship this is the screenshot from uh, from the game, and we'll look at this in a little bit more detail now. In the bottom right there, we have a, a close-up, first of all. This is the index. Uh, so what you would do is you would move the little needle to your target ship's speed. So in other words, how fast you are moving, what you want to aim for when you're going to do your depth charge. And then you would want to set the vertical axis uh, to the depth charge setting. Now we at the moment have only three settings, shallow, medium and deep, so you would set it to 10, 30 or 60, as well as the ship's course, which for one third speed is eight knots and for two thirds is 15 knots, for example. A, st a head standard is 25 knots and you would just move the stylus to the point on the uh, grid there where those two lines intersect. Then You'll have the range indicators at the top here. Now, you don't need to know the ranges as such, but just be aware they exist. So the bottom scale is what we look at, uh, the ones labeled 1 through 15. This represents a speed in, ten, in hundreds of yards, so 10 on that is 1,000 yards. Last but not least, the last piece of function that you need to be aware of is the range rate in knots. This is another way of saying the, the rate of closure. In other words, how fast are you closing in on the target? This is used to calculate when to do the um, when to do the target drop. But don't worry, as it says there, we're not going to be doing vector math. The analog computer does that for us. How? Here is a stack of dots represented as the target in the the target you bought in the demo at the moment. Each one of those dots is a contact from the active sonar that's been pop, plotted plotted on the line, and this piece of paper will move down. Ver uh, vertically through time. As we get closer, the dots start shifting to the left as we start getting closer and closer. So for example, the initial dot there was caught at about 14, 1500 yards. And as we see, we're now, as of the last ping, uh, probably about 10,000 yards, uh, probably about 10, so 1000 yards. We calculate the closure rate by simply taking the vertical lines marked on this map, any set of lines, whatever matches with the the stack nice and neatly and mirrors it. So we have a good alignment here. Uh, ignore the dot in the middle of the, of the shot, but you see the stack of dots and we've made the red line match the edges of the dots. Doing this, we would have a result of about seven knots. Uh, you can see, however, 
the, in a practical, more practical example, that the closure rate changed, which and that means that for us, the target changed speed or course, or we did, perhaps. But we'll now have to readjust the plot. So what I would then do is I would then twil tilt the plexiglass to match the new trend for the stack. So we forget all the previous data and go with the most recent data. Here's a, a more long-term adjustment. We see there that there's been some more adjustments and, I've prob and I would have swung the plexiglass uh, to account for that. But as we get closer and closer, we're now at oh, what, that about 200, 100 yards. And uh, we can see there on the bottom, I've already preset the depth pattern to shallow based on the sonar's uh, information. And I'm moving at a head two thirds, which means my ship speed is set to 15. So the indexer, if you follow that line down, goes to about 15. On the left, on the vertical lines, and on the horizontal lines, it's at 10 for 10 seconds per the depth chart setting. When the stack of dots touches the black line uh, at the very edge of the plexiglass on the left side, that is when to drop, assuming a few things. That there is the drop cue. Now you can see the gap at the top where we lost contact. As I said, you're going to lose contact just before you want to drop. We've gone directly overhead the U-boat. We now have to hope that the U-boat has not changed course or speed, or if we think they have, we can account, we try to account for that. And we just hold our course, hold our position, hold our speed, do nothing else. And when the black dots, and uh, when the black stack of dots touches the black line, we start dropping our pattern. We can drop several patterns up until we lose the last bit of data, basically. And as you can see there, I've not changed the stylus and adjustment. I've done that before I've even started my attack run. Uh, so if I change speed or if the target changes depth, we will need to recompute that. But we can do it dynamically. We don't have to worry about taking new data. The most common errors we see on the TRR uh, are due to a misunderstanding of how it works. The TRR shows when to attack but it does assume the, the target has made no change to course, speed, or depth after you've lost the contact. If any of this happens, the solution will not work. Now, if you believe that the contact is changing any of these when you're underneath them, you could consider going around and trying again with another reattack, or you could guess a little early, a little late, a little port, a little starboard, and so on. Also, the TRR has no care whatsoever about your target bearing. If you passed alongside the target instead of directly over it, you'll still miss. Um, you've simply dropped next to the target instead of on top of it. As a result, it is best to come from the target's stern. Lastly, do remember this is an analog computer, so garbage in, garbage out. Don't forget to set the depth charges and the, sp the ship speed before you do your attack. If you do change either of those, you'll need to readjust them before you do your drop. I hope that's been somewhat useful for you. Uh, I'd like to thank Iron Wolf Studios for asking me to do this, and uh, obviously for the gameplay and thumbnail art that I've been using. You can find our Discord on the link there. And uh, up, coming up next, we'll do the OSC wheel. Uh, I am, of course, open to other requests, and I'd love feedback in the comments uh, on their Discord or in my channel here, and I'll see what I can do for you. Happy fishing. Post commentary to ghost up here. I just thought I'd kind of annotate what you see here. Right so, I've already dropped the first spread, but I would have dropped it a little bit early just because I myself hadn't quite set the TRR properly. The event camera obviously showed me that, and that's when I realised I'd made my mistake. So, I also could, I also knew from the way the bearing area indicator, just in the top left next to my face, it was drifting that I was needing to turn left. So, you see me pulling sharp left, and uh, I'm about to click the pull again button, but I'm watching for the TRR to go to the black line. It's almost at the black line. I can't quite tell because the event camera is too small, so I just take a guess. I start, a, I start a spread while still turning to compensate for the fact that I've realised I'm still on I've checked my TRR, I realised I'm pretty much where I think I should be. And all of a sudden I get the hit as soon as, as, soon as they take the shots. Got him!